Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.5.6 and Razbam Sims AV8B Harrier Module. Welcome to Tutorial 11, Laser JDAMs and APKWS. So this is going to be a, a rather acronym loaded episode, so I'm quickly going to decode those two for you. Uh, of course, we previously had a, a video on the JDAM, the Joint Direct Attack Ammunition. Uh, it's a, a guidance kit that can be fitted to standard dumb bombs to provide it with INS and GPS guidance. This is a later development of those kits, which also adds a laser seeker in the nose, giving you a, a dual tracking capability. You can either drop these bombs as laser guided bombs, or as JDAMs, or even drop them as JDAMs and then switch to using the laser after dropping them. Uh, so they're extremely flexible. Uh, the Harrier can carry the GBU 54V1-B, <laughs> which is uh, it's based on the Mark 82, so it's a 500 pound bomb, and we can see it here on the inner stations of this, uh, on this particular loadout. Uh, and as you can see, the, the back end uh, is the exact same guidance kit as a standard JDAM. The difference here is that we have this laser seeker uh, mounted on the nose. So that's the, that's the laser JDAM. Also today we're going to be taking a little look at the APKWS, which is the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System. Um, it's a, a ridiculous name for what is basically a laser rocket. So this takes the standard uh, Hydra uh, unguided rockets and it adds uh, a guidance kit to them basically, allowing them to follow a laser spot uh, just like the the laser guided bombs or the laser JDAMs can. Uh, so this particular weapon is designated the AGR-20A. Uh, we have them mounted on the middle pylons here uh, in LOW 131 launchers, each of which contain seven 2.75 inch Hydra rockets with the APKWS guidance kit uh, attached. Uh, two warheads are available. You can have them in high explosive, which is what we have here, uh, which is just a fairly standard high explosive with shrapnel warhead, uh, or you can have them as MPP warheads, which is multi-purpose penetrator, uh, and these of course are more useful against things like hardened structures, armoured vehicles, things like that. Think of these as low-cost, lower-yield Hellfire missiles. They, they, they operate very similarly to the, the laser Hellfires that are carried by Apaches, but at a fraction of the cost, uh, and albeit with a, a less powerful warhead. But uh, you can launch these in pairs, um, and that's actually kind of recommended. If you're attacking an armoured vehicle, you would tend to launch these in pairs, and then you're pretty much guaranteed a kill. Uh, that's going to be enough oomph to take out your average tank uh, or similar kind of vehicle. So, uh, I'm going to get the aircraft started up, and I'll show you how to configure these weapons. But today I'm going to demonstrate the laser JDAM in relative release, that's target of opportunity. I'm not going to demonstrate the absolute release mode because that's identical to the JDAM. Uh, and in actual fact, if you use it in absolute release against an ATHS data link target, you have no opportunity to use the laser uh, spot tracker anyway on them. So they, they act exactly like JDAMs if you launch them that way. Uh, so we're going to do relative release because then I can demonstrate dropping them in INS GPS guided mode and switching to uh, laser seeking. Um, and that of course, you know, like you would ask, why would you do that? Why would you need a JDAM that has a laser seeker on it? Well, um, it gives you a greater degree of accuracy because of course uh, JDAMs are, are guided on a, a set of coordinates that you give them. Coordinates are only going to be accurate to I don't know, a metre, two metres, something like that. You're not going to be able to put them through a window or a, a ventilation shaft or something like that. Whereas in laser-guided mode, you can. Or, um, the other thing is, of course, JDAMs only work against stationary targets. And if you have a laser spot for them to track, you can actually employ them against moving targets, which could be useful. And then the third situation in which you might want to use them is the ability to change target after dropping them. I'm not exactly sure why you would do that, but it's an extra capability that you gain. You could drop them in JDAM mode against one target, suddenly realize that you want them to hit something else, fire the laser, and they'll seek after the laser. So we're going to go to the range, and we're going to drop the, the laser JDAMs, and then we're going to fire the APKWS laser rockets. But uh, I'll start up the aircraft, and you'll join me there. 
Okay, so you now join me post startup. Uh, something that I didn't mention uh, prior is that uh, the APKWS rockets, um, the laser code that they will seek on is manually set on the ground by the ground crew. So if you want to change that, and you can only change it on the ground when the engine is off and the canopy is open, press right shift K to bring up your kneeboard and you'll see here that it lists APKWS laser code. Currently it's 1688, which luckily today is what I'm going to use, but if I wasn't going to use that, I can use left shift, left alt, and buttons one, two, or three. So let me just try that. Left shift, left alt, and one. Oh, actually it wouldn't allow me to do it right now because my engine is running. But anyway, you get the idea. Left shift, left alt, one, two, or three. That will allow you to change digits two, three, and four, digit one cannot be changed in a, in a laser code. Um, so, yeah, that's how you do that. Um, next, uh, we're going to take a look at the left MPCD and bring up the stores page. Uh, as usual, we're presented with a standard wing form. Um, in the case of the, the GBU-54, the laser JDAM, the system represents them as J82L. Uh, that's to tell you that they're based on Mark 82s, so they're 500 pound bombs. J for JDAM and L for laser. Um, if you watched the, the JDAM video, you'll recall that those were labelled J82. So the only difference here is that we have an L. And 20A is for the AGR-20A, which is the correct designation for the APKWS, or just laser rockets, as I like to call them. Uh, there's not a great deal of setup to be done here. If I select the JDAMs, those are the ones we're going to use first. I'll put it into air-to-ground mode so we get the boxes. Um, we're going to be dropping them in mode automatic. Uh, and I'm going to drop quantities of one and multiples of one. Um, if I was going to make use of absolute release mode, I would choose my targets here by pressing targets, and I could select uh, you know, targets one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine, uh, and this, these are the targets that are loaded into my ATHS system. Today, we just want to make sure that none of these targets are selected, because we're going to be dropping these in relative release mode. Uh, we then have terminal uh, options that we can define for the weapons. Today I'm going to do a direct attack, but if we wanted to define a heading and a, a dive angle, we could do that here. Uh, and then fusing is something we are going to change, because they default to safe, we don't want them on safe. We're going to go for an instantaneous detonation. There is an opportunity to do a delayed detonation as well. Uh, and that concludes the, the setup for the, the JDAMs. There's no ability to, to kind of ripple these or anything like that. They're always being released individually. If I choose my uh, APKWS by selecting 20A, here we have the ability, just like with the normal rockets, to choose quantity in multiples. Today I'm actually going to launch quantities of 2 in multiples of 2. That's my preference here, and you'll see that it boxes the launchers here. Uh, and just with the normal rockets, you can set the minimum and maximum range that will appear on the um, on the reticle. Um, you might do that if you're going to launch them unguided. It, it is possible to just fire these without a laser spot, and they will work exactly like normal Hydra rockets. Uh, the only issue there, of course, is that you're wasting a bit of taxpayer money by sending a, a guided munition downrange without actually guiding it. Um, but uh, you could do that if you wanted to. But uh, yeah, the only real options here are quantity and multiples. Um, other than that, we leave them as they are. I'm going to leave the laser JDAM selected just now because they'll be the first weapons that I employ today. A uh, quick thing to note as well is how many of these you can carry. Um, the laser JDAMs on the inner pylons here, I'm just carrying them singly, but on the inner pylons they can be double mounted, and on the middle pylons they can be triple mounted. So you can actually carry ten of these. Uh, if you just want to be carrying laser JDAMs. Uh, they cannot be carried on the outer pylons because they require a, a data connection, a data bus connection. Uh, APKWS, uh, you can put single launch tubes on the inner and middle pylons for a total of 28 rockets in four launchers. Uh, so you can carry quite a lot of those as well. Um, today, uh, I'm just carrying two laser JDAMs and two pods for a total of 14 rockets. Okay, uh, I'll get the aircraft up in the air and I'll join you guys en route to the range. Okay, here you join us inbound the range and uh, let's quickly get set up to drop a laser JDAM. So if we start off by taking a little look at the left-hand side 
uh, MPCD, and we've got the HSD up here just now. Uh, waypoint 5 is co-located with Bomb Circle we want to attack. So I'm in waypoint mode, I have waypoint 5 selected, and I can press designate, and we've now designated that steer point as our target. Uh, let's also at the same time go into air to ground mode, and what the master arm is in fact already on, and we can confirm here that J82L is boxed. Uh, let's also just confirm that the fuse is correctly set. Let's press weapon. Uh, oh yeah, here we go, fuse. So if we make sure we're in fuse, it's actually reset back to safe. Let's make sure that that's an instantaneous. Uh, we have remove the weapon display now. And uh, now we can go over to the right hand side. And here, we first need to set up the laser code. So if I press sensor select switch aft, uh, we have the DMT up. I can press code and I can enter 1688 enter and that's the laser code now set up and now let's go menu targeting pod uh, and we've got the standard targeting pod display we're going to use the targeting pod today because of course we need to be able to fire a laser designator so let's bring the pod out of standby and immediately it's popped us uh, looking at the bomb circle I actually I already had this pod set up in floor mode and narrow but um, yeah what you could do is double tap sensor slide switch down and now we've got control of the pod, it confirms here T-Pod. You want to make sure that your laser is armed, and you want to make sure that the mode for the laser is laser, and we're then ready to fire. I'm already looking directly at the target, but um, we're currently in slave mode, as you can see, so we're actually using the DMT's track in order to track that target. Let's press sensor select switch aft, and you'll see that we go into area track mode. Now let's depress the TDC. We've designated that target, Let's fire the laser ranger, just to make sure that we have an absolutely perfect position. And we can confirm here, we're in T-Pod mode. T-Pod is the designator, and uh, T-Pod is what's tracking that particular target. So we are pretty much good to proceed. Let's take a little look at the HUD symbology, which should be very familiar to all of you if you've seen the uh, JDAM video. So we've got the, the circle with the dot as before. We're in G-Automatic. We have two J82Ls. Uh, we're 10 miles to the target, and you can see here, Diamond is the target, and the Octagon is where the team, uh, targeting pod is looking. We have an L here, telling us that our designator is in laser mode. So the last thing that we have to do before proceeding to attack the target is depress waypoint increment for more than one second, and then release. That's us confirmed the targeting position uh, that we're going to use, and we now have our range scale up. So this is our current range. That's maximum range, that's minimum range. Because we're in relative or target of opportunity mode, we're attacking target zero, and that's in small font because we're out of range. And we have an N because we're not using terminal parameters. If I press uncage, I can switch between using terminal parameters and no terminal parameters. And we're gonna do a direct no terminal parameters attack today. And the maximum minimum range is also repeated on the EHSD down here as before. So let's bring the aircraft out of pause and let's just fly directly towards the target. We're going to see the percentage chance appear below the circle once we're in range. We're going to want that to count up towards 100%. There we go, we are now in range and that's confirmed on the right hand side of the HUD. Let's get that percentage chance up. I'll, I'll probably do a release at around about 80 or 90% just to give it a good chance and then after a moment we'll fire the laser. Okay, holding pickle. Bomb is away fire the laser and I'm going to put the aircraft into autopilot and let's watch that. There's the bomb. There's the bomb. And the bomb circle is there. You can see that it's, uh, it's flying mostly laterally just now. Accelerate time just to get it there a bit quicker. And it looks like it's starting to actively guide now. Wow. Yeah. 
as you can see, that was actually extremely accurate. When I do that type of drop with the JDAM, it normally lands within the center circle of the bomb, of the uh, bomb target. Uh, that actually hit dead center on the container that we have in the middle there. Let's turn the laser off. Uh, so that was extremely accurate. Very, very good. Okay, let's move on to the APKWS. I can select it using the 20A profile here. And again, we can confirm quantity 2, multiple 2. That's all nicely set up. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn around. Uh, let's turn off the autopilot. Let's come back around and re-attack that same bomb circle. We still have the targeting pod looking at that location. Maximum range for this weapon is 7 nautical miles. So make all your shots within 7. And there we go. We're on target. Range is counting down. I'm going to bring the speed down a little bit. Just to give us some more time to react. Put the pipper on the target. Let's fire the laser in anticipation. And let's push and hold pickle. Whoosh! Off they go. Let's uh, just level out there. And watch those make their way down. Let's see just just how accurate these can be. It should be possible for these to hit a pretty small target very accurately. You see it slowly pitching up to make its way to hit that target. There you go. How accurate was that? That was absolutely spot on. Uh, and that was just the high explosive version of the rocket. Of course, there is the multi-purpose penetrator, which you would use against armoured targets as well. So let's turn off the laser. Uh, and that concludes the demonstration. So you now know how to make use of the laser JDAM, the GPU-54, and the APKWS, or laser rocket as I like to call it. Um, they operate in pretty much exactly the same way. And in the case of the laser JDAM, you have all the standard modes that the the normal JDAM has, plus the ability to guide on a laser. I hope that you all enjoyed that. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, that's a really big help for me in the channel, and I'll see you all next time.